Hello everyone, welcome to Global Online Platform. So Dr. Swati is here, your educator, and the student those are preparing for NTA UGC in June 2024 cycle for Commerce and Management. For those students having a very big news for you, that is crash course of the business economics we are going to be held over here. And this is, a, we are uh, conducting this crash course in the, uh, in the some parts, my, uh, might be in a four part. So this is the part one. Here we complete, complete business economics with a detailed concept building with a proper diagram and the, all the diagram what whatever the concept of this will discuss, discuss it in very detail okay so let's stay uh, stay with tune with us okay before going ahead i will quickly tell you about our new batch has been started from today that is 20th of the may and uh, here you will get complete course on commerce and management here you will get daily live lectures complete syllabus notes in the pdf format or uh, full uh, and so syllabus mock test more more uh, more than 4000 mcq series with a detailed explanation and the pyqs with a detailed explanation and here you will get paper one is free of cost if you register yourself for the paper two and for registration paper two here global online provide you 20 percent of the discount on the fees so in this amount you will get paper one plus paper two and you can prepare yourself very well and the contact the whatsapp contact number is given in your screen get in touch this contact number uh, for any query so how to download the global online go to google play store uh, search the global online uh, install the global online then register your uh, with your mobile number then uh, enter the whatever the course you want in the my course okay and after that uh, registration once you get registration you will get all the recorded lecture in a very proper uh, folders um, uh, and uh, there you will have the recorded lecture here the pdf file the materials all have been very um uh, arranged in a very systematic manner so let's join with us let's start our lecture of the today that is uh, economics so let's start with the introduction to the economics okay so uh, who is the father first uh, first thing the who is the father of the economics who introduced the economics so the father of the economics is adam smith okay you have to keep in your mind because this is really important the who is the father of the economics so the, the adam smith is a father of the economics what is the economics economics means uh, that means that we are having uh, unlimited wants but having a limited scare uh, resources result into the problem of making the choice and allocation of the resources yes we have in the we have an unlimited want but uh, the scarcity of resources is uh, uh, is now that's why how to utilize this scare resources for to fulfill our wants this is then economics so uh, in the economics we study we study two things that is one thing that is how individual and the society work together okay to perform the scare resources into the goods and the services to satisfy the most important uh, important of the infinite want because our wants wants the individual wants are infinite oh, okay that's why and the resources are very scarce in the environment so how to utilize it how to come together and serve this uh, our uh, fulfill our needs and the wants with these resources this is the economics and the second thing what is we study in the economics that is how to distribute these goods and services among themselves so this is nothing but this is a these two things we have studied in the economics now the study the economics is a, is also in a positive science and it also have in a normative science so what is it ma'am what is the positive science so what is first of all you have to every every concept behind the economics behind the every words there is an some person who uh, tell us who uh, aware us about the things okay what is it so the economics is a positive science is uh, introduced by the robin is introduced by the robin and the objective of this purpose why it is a positive science it because it is based on the fact that's why it is a science okay and it is a positive science because the study what actually analyzing the and explain the casual relationship between the variables and clearly describe the economics issue whatever the economic issue, how the economic of the country to operate this is the main issue which we have discussed in this positive science science okay and the statement can be tested uh, using the scientific method 
that's why we using over here the scientific research this all based on the fact we, here we analyze our uh, the factual data we are here, here see the relationship the casual relationship between the variables okay so these are the positive sign positive signs that's why the economics is a positive sign now the economics is normative science ma'am why it is a normative science first of all you have to keep in mind that is normative science is given by the marshall and the pigu who is given that normative science is given by the marshall and pigu positive science is given by the robin okay now what is the normative science ma'am normative science means there where the fact is uh, is based on the value based on the opinion and based on the judgment okay so the when the when the whatever the uh, our judgment whatever the app uh, whatever the approach of the economics is when it is based on the values based on the opinion based on the judgment when we study in that point of view then it is a economics is also a normative science okay on here the provide a solution of the economic issue statement cannot be tested over here we cannot test in the normative science there is a difference between the positive and the normative that in the positive sense we can test it with the science we are with using the scientific method okay like a research method uh, research, researching something okay in the statistical manner so this is when you are uh, using the statistical methods to calculate or how the uh, why it is a science so is that in that case an economic is a positive science and when we are not unable to test it because we cannot test our values we cannot test our opinion and judgment okay we can just uh, classify this the satisfactory non satisfactory in a normative way so that's why it is a normative science also i hope so you are clearing your concept over here the main thing the author's name and the the propounder's name you have to keep in your mind okay now next the uh, main definitions are given by the uh, for the economics now the uh, uh, economics is a wealth someone calls it as economics is a wealth so why it is the economic wealth economic wealth is defined by the by uh, in a two way in a first that is the classical writer by the classical writer and by the neo classical writer the classical writer is given by the adam smith and the jb say and many others uh, uh, other author other writers okay so who who uh, gave the classical writer that is adam smith and the jb say and the other neo classical uh, classical writer is given by the marshall neo classical marshall and the pegu clear it now then the scarcity because the uh, economic is a wealth maximization okay is a scarcity of resources so the word scarcity is a uh, given by the economics robin who given the scarcity word the given by the robin okay and what is the scarcity is the science of cho choice making because we have a science of choice making next thing that is a growth definition of the economic is given by this samuelson growth definition is given by the samuelson wealth definition is divided into two category classical neo classical classical given by the adam smith jb say neo classical given by the marshall pegu and the scarcity given by the robinson and the growth is given by the samuelson okay clear it now let's discuss the theory of the business form okay here we are going to discuss the theories okay now theories for what the business form so we will discuss it one by one because all the theories are related to our economics business economics okay here the the, the business form is a is a the, the theory is the first theory is that is a maximization of the satisfaction okay you know that we have a wants and with that that wants we the uh, consumers wants they have to satisfy their wants so maximum satisfaction after consuming the product it is the uh, theory this is the theory is given by the given by the satoshi okay who is given that he is given by the satoshi now according to this theory the entrepreneur who entrepreneur want to maximize the satisfaction 
even at the cost of a profit how the sovis uh, the saitoski uh, uh, said that we have to the, uh, the entrepreneurs want and entrepreneurs want to maximize the satisfaction even they are also the, not only they are maximizing the satisfaction even they are getting the profit and fact is after certain level of the profit entrepreneur give more preference to relaxation in comparison to the profit okay once they uh, once they reach at the level uh, where they get a maximum profit after that they relax relaxing to comparison that profit so that's where the maximization of the satisfaction this theory of the business firm given by the saito scheme okay clear now the secure uh, secure pro profit theory secure profit theory is propounded by the rothschild who is who is given the uh, secure profit uh, profit theory given by the rothschild rothschild okay rothschild now the what is about this theory this theory is talking about the firm seeking not to get a maximum profit but to secure the profit there is an there you if you are in the maximum profit satisfaction theory you see that the firm earn the profit maximum profit and after that it compare and get a relaxation and want to be maximum satisfied okay but here they also give the uh, importance to secure your profit not only your real once you get the maximum profit you don't get a relax you have to be secure for your profit maximization so it's this theory is given by the growth child okay this is a secure profit theory now the next theory that is growth maximization theory is uh, the first observed by the growth maximization theory is first observed by the mr penros okay but but and fully developed by the robin maris and the bomol okay is observed by the mr penrose but it is developed by the fully developed by the maris and bomol the aim is to maximization of the growth of the firm is not at the uh, in this theory they are not concentrated on the profit maximization now they are moving toward the growth of the firm if the growth of the firm going to be increase profit also go, uh, going to be increase this is the concept behind of this theory okay so the firm the maximization of the growth we need a growth uh, the, we need a demand and we need a consumption equal okay if we have a demand if we have a consumption so company so the firm will get a their maximum growth and if they once they are going to get their maximum growth the profit will also be going to be increases there is no need to take care of their profit to secure your profit to maximize your profit okay you have to pay attention on your growth everything will be go, uh, going in a very smooth way okay the two constant uh, constant is discussed in this theory that is a managerial constant and the financial constant okay now let's move on to the next theory that is the profit maximization theory the profit maximization theory theory also known as traditional conventional economic theory because it's a traditional thing why your business doing the business for the maximization for this a business is nothing but a profit maximization so that's why this is a traditional and conventional economic theory so this theory is propounded by whom nicolas and the willemon willemson okay who propounded this nicolas and the willemson clear now the all the here i uh, i have put every propounder's name because this is really important for your examination just uh, keep your diary updated with this uh, uh, write the, all the author's name and the who give this theory okay now the uh, the surplus on the what the theory is about the theory is about to surplus on after making in this theory we discuss the surplus on after making the payment payment to all the factor of the production all the factor of the production means here we are here is a labor okay capital labor uh, to the labor we give uh, the, the firm give the wages capital pay the who invest their, their capital they get a interest okay uh, or a shareholder get a dividend okay so these kind of uh, things so the all the factor of production which are involved they all to be 
paid after making the payment to all of them then they will get a whatever the surplus they have that is a profit okay so here what is happening the profit how do we get profit from the total revenue when we discuss our total cost then we will get a profit here the only focus on the profit maximization okay the rules of the profit maximization the this uh, this uh, two rules are given here, over here that is one thing that is either to either the marginal cost marginal cost is equals to marginal revenue ma'am now the question is what is a marginal marginal means from the total unit whatever unit you have consumed from that total unit if you if you add a additional unit okay from the total unit if you additional if you deduct that additional unit that is a marginal cost so whatever the cost you pay for the additional unit the word additional additional okay is used in the marginal marginal okay now the marginal cost when the marginal cost is equals to marginal revenue okay whatever the cost you have pay and the is equals to you get a revenue in that case you have you have reached to the maximum profit and the next thing that the marginal cost should be cut mr from the below okay so here you see this is a diagram is given over here this diagram this is you have to just keep in my your mind that is ar average revenue is nothing but a demand curve okay you know that demand curve is a sloping downward okay so average revenue is a demand curve so the uh, and this is a marginal revenue it is a, on the left side of the average revenue and it is going steadily in the down to the downward toward the downward okay as compared to average revenue okay now here you can see that is a this is a marginal cost this is a marginal cost curve and this is a average cost so what is a what is talking what is talking that is a marginal cost curve this marginal cost curve should cut cut to marginal revenue from the below from this below okay when the marginal cost are increasing here and the marginal revenue is going downward toward okay so when in that point is cut so this is in that case the company earn the maximum profit okay the marginal cost should cut mr from the below not from the above okay not for e below means on the marginal cost curve or either either here not above okay clear so this is the profit maximization theory now the maximization of managerial managerial utility or we can say in either word that is a managerial discrete theory is so managerial utility theory is given by the oliver the developed by the oliver e williamson oliver e williamson the objective of this theory the shareholder and the manager are two separate groups okay so the shareholder are the separate group of we have a company so here the shareholder is a different different group a group and the manager is a different group okay here the shareholder want a high dividend whereas a manager here the shareholder what want they want a higher dividend okay they want a dividend okay and the manager having the desire desire for what desire for expanding his staff desire for increasing the managerial emolument emolument means like a, uh, like a facilities okay so facility like a entertainment lounges luxurious offices staff cars okay company phone so this is a emolument uh, emoluments uh, okay so increase the managerial emoluments this is also the uh, desire of the manager now the third thing that is a description descriptionary power Power of the investment, whatever they investing over there, they having a discretionary power. Okay, so this is there the manager having a different desire and the shareholder having to pay the higher dividend. Here, the theory implies once the shareholder achieve a certain level of profit, okay, then the manager, then the manager are free to increase the theory own emol emoluments, emoluments like what we with the luxurious uh, the uh, uh, facilities is given by the company so they are paying the attention on the entertainment lounge luxurious office staff care cars mobile car phones so this kind of okay the staff and the expenditure on them here 
the manager utility function having a formula so what is about this formula here the utility means manager u means manager a utility here s means additional expenditure on staff s means staff okay so addition whatever the additional expenditure you are doing for the staff that is a s here is m means manager Emulments. Emulments we already discussed. Emulments means whatever the facilities. Okay. And here is a D, uh, D means a discre discretionary, uh, discretionary investment. Clear it? Now, next theory that is a uh, satisfying theory. Satisfying theory is given by the Herbert Simon. Who is given the satisfying theory? Satisfying theory is given by the no maximum satisfying theory here you can see that is uh, here you can see maximum satisfaction theory is a uh, different is given by the cyto scheme okay is given by the cyto scheme but uh, here the satisf uh, satisfying theory is uh, given by the herbert simonson s s okay the first economist propounded and here the uh, satisfying uh, satisfying mean, uh, means a satisfactory overall performance okay satisfying from the overall performance so what are the overall performance like uh, the objective state that the firms go go, go to maxi not maximizing the profit only but they attain to the certain level of the rate of the profit holding from the certain shares markets uh, market shares okay certain share market sale ma shares of the sale market sale and the certain level of the production okay so this is a overall satisfaction if your market share is good your selling uh, your market sales is good your production level is good then you will the firm will get a overall overall satisfaction so this satisfying theory is given by the habit my uh, salmon okay now the revenue or the sales maximization theory this say revenue and the sale actually this theory is focused on the revenue and how do you get a revenue after selling the maximum goods okay so this is given by the bommel okay according to this theory once the profit reach acceptable level okay once you get your profit at the accept acceptance level then the goal of the firm become maximization of the sales revenue okay you have to produce more and sales more so this theory is given by the uh, bommel now the behavioral theory the behavioral theory is given by the richard richard set uh, set okay and the james march now this occur this according to this theory the firm has a multiple objective multiple goals multiple decision and the organization collation okay so these theory discuss the multiple objective their behavior behavioral theory matter how to behave in the in the firm in the um, um, in the um, in the area of the market in the economic okay and the multiple goals and the multiple decisions is organi organizational collision okay so the behavior theory is given by the richard serrett and the james march okay now after discussing these theories, we have uh, these are the theories of the business firm. Now the theories are so here, the theories about the profit. The theory of the profit is uh, uh, given by many authors. Okay. Now let's see the one by one. We'll just, just discuss in the short. Just you make your notes uh, with me. Okay. Now the rent theory of the profit. What rent theory of the profit is given by the Francis Walker, okay, rent theory is given by the Walker. The, what is the objective behind this theory? The profit is the rentability. Profit is nothing but the rentability. Then the dynamic theory of the profit is given, uh, given by the J.B. Clark. Okay, who given J.B. Clark? He said that profit is a result of the dynamic changes. If you're changing your, your area, then the dynamic changes, you're doing diamond changes in your area, then you will get a maximum profit. Then the Rix theory. Rix theory given by the, this Rix theory given by the J.B. Holving. 
holly okay so the uh, holly and this theory is about the higher is the expected profit rate okay business having the higher uh, higher is the expected rate of profit so here you will get here is an a risk theory because uh, uh, the thing the um, the uh, the propounder is say the the hallway say that if you are focusing only on only on the on the profit there is an uh, the you are uh, risking more okay the business and a higher is the expected the profit rate okay the profit rate you to be need to be increase okay so reducing your risk okay now the uncertainty bearing theory uncertainty bearing theory is given by there is an uncertainty there is a night okay if they in the night there is an uncertainty you can remember like this okay the, the the theory is about the profit is reward of uncertainty bearing okay there is an uncertainty in the right so uncertainty is given by given by the professor night so that's the night or night then the innovation theory of the profit is given by the Scripter, okay, given by the scripter, the entrepreneur uh, initiating uh, innovation uh, in the business and when he succeed, he earn the profit, his reward, okay, earn the profit, his reward, so innovation theory is given by him, okay, now the wage theory of a profit is given by the Tussing, okay, the yeah, wage theory is given by the professor Tussing, now, now the sourcing is about the labor surplus amount which the enterprise is receiving after meeting all the expenses of the production where the wages from a part of the cost and the production okay now the next theory that is the managerial productivity theory of the profit my marginal sorry marginal productivity theory of profit given by the marshall marginal marshall professor marshall profit is equals to the marginal productivity of the enterprises marginal means nothing but the additional if you are additional producing something selling something so then you will get a profit okay this marshall now the main concept uh, we are to uh, moving toward the main concept that is the demand okay economics is made is all depend on the demand and supply cost and price okay all these so we will discuss over here the demand the concept demands refer to the quantity of the goods okay that nothing but a demand is nothing but a quantity of goods or services that consumer are willing and able to purchase not only willing not only willing not only desire not only wants but also having a ability ability to purchase it okay they having ability of various different prices okay during a given period of a time so that this is that is a demand okay then the effective demand for the thing uh, things that depend on meeting all the characteristic characteristic effective desire purchasing power willingness to spend money okay they having a desire they having a want they having a purchasing power but if they are not willing if the customer is not willing to spend too much money on the particular goods then this is not a called a demand then the customer do not purchase that goods so they having a desire they having a purchasing power they having a willingness to pay the money spend the money and the quantity to purchase how much quantity to purchase on and the time period is also important and the most important Important, that is the price okay so demand is a uh, is nothing but um quantity and the price there is a relationship between the quantity okay quantity and the price okay for that uh, they have uh, they have the uh, additional uh, desire additional uh, effective uh, characteristic that is they having a desire they having a purchasing power they having a spend willingness to spend then the determinants of the demand the price of the commodity price of the related commodity okay then the if the price of the commodity price of the related commodity and this is a complementary goods and the competent goods substitute goods income for of the consumer test preference of the consumer these all affect the demand okay if there are what about the, what is the complementary goods complementary goods like a car and petrol for running car we need a petrol 
they are a complementary to each other if we having a petrol we can run a vehicles petrol vehicles okay so they these are the complementary goods to each other like a another example i have that is a uh, that is a burger of the mcdonald and the burger of the burger king so this is one of these these two are also an a no 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 sorry this is not a complementary this is a substitute goods now the competing goods the competing goods the goods which are competing to each other substitute goods the best go best having the which i have already said that is a burger of the mcdonald and the burger king so these are the substitute goods and another example this is a very common example that is a tea and coffee okay this is also a substitute income of the consumer how much they have uh, they having a income to a consumer test uh, preference of the consumer expectation in change in the price in the future okay population size of the population composition of the population level of the national income and the distribution consumer and the credit facility and the interest rate so all in this factors uh, demand is going to be affected okay now there are some relationship where of the uh, of the goods uh, with their income and with their prices is given in case of normal goods okay in case of normal goods the relationship is uh, <clears throat> of the with the income is positive if uh, suppose i will give you the example over here if in the normal goods having the relationship if our income is going to be increases okay if our income increases so our purchasing capacity or willingness to capacity is also going to be increases that's why this is a positive relationship now the relationship with the price if the price of some product is going to be increases so what is effect on the demand demand going to be decreases so it, that's why it is a negative impact on uh, on the negative relation with the with the price in case of inferior goods inferior goods ma'am they don't do not have a much uh, importance in our life so that is the inferior goods so what are the relation of the inferior goods with the income if income also having a negative uh, negative relationship because if the price of the inferior goods increases demand for the inferior, inferior goods going to be decreases because we do not need there are inferior goods why we spend too much money on such inferior goods okay then like uh, uh, then the relations the inferior uh, uh, goods having a relation with the uh, price the with the price is also having a negative relation because same reason if the price of the goods is increasing demand for the inferior goods going to be decreases because the relation with the price is also having a negative relation okay then the for the given goods given means highly inferior goods they are highly inferior goods okay so highly inferior goods that's like they having a negative relation in case of income but they having a positive relation why the positive relation in case of uh, given good this is an exception of the demand okay this is an exception of the demand the price of the inferior goods is increases demand for inferior goods is also going to be increases okay if the price of the inferior goods going to be decreases demand for the inferior goods also going to be decreases okay so the inferior goods or the given goods are having a relation with the with uh, with the uh, with the is having a positive relation okay sorry here is a positive relation yes i already yes this is a positive relation now the demand analysis demand function is show the function the uh, functional relationship between the quantity demanded of the commodity and its uh, at various de uh, determinants the here you can express uh, in this formula that is a uh, dx is equals to frequency of px p1 y tf okay in the linear demand function the slope of the demand curve remain constant in case of linear demand okay throughout the length the non linear or curve uh, curvy linear demand the slope of the demand curve that is a change in price divided by change in quantity change the demand curve is in the instead of demand line non linear demand function yet demand curve so let's discuss the types this is an important 
टाइप्स ऑफ द डिमांड डजन ज्वाइन डिमांड ज्वाइन डिमांड मीन्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री प्रोडक्ट कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री प्रोडक्ट मीन्स इफ द कार द सर्विसेस ऑफ द कार और द सप्लाई ऑफ द कार इंक्रीजेस ओके पेट्रोल कंजम्पन ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी इंक्रीजेस ओके सो दिस इज हैविंग अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री गुड्स कंपोजिशन मीन्स द डिमांड फॉर द कमोडिटी ऑफ सर्विसेज दैव हा मल्टीपल यूज वी यूज दैट लाइक अ मिल्क milk okay milk having a multiple use that is having for the ghee okay is also used for the butter milk in the in the summer season we also use for the uh, paneer okay we also use for the butter and so many and so many ice cream so this is a composite demand ice cream is a, uh, the milk is the best example now the der derived demand deva derived demand demand that the rises due to the demand of the other product okay so that's why like um, Insurance policy. This is a derived demand. Actually, going to be created. It's not. A, nobody is interested to uh, take an insurance premium. Insurance policy. Then the competitive demand is a demand occur when there is an alternative services or the product of the customer can chosen. Okay, that is the competitive. We are compare with the ah uh, with our uh, with our other competitors and we choose the alternative services or product to the customer. okay then the cross demand cross demand is like this a demand for the goods or services whose demand depend not only on its own price but also the price of the other related services that is a cross okay there is an a cross demand having a substitute goods okay substitute if the price of the one substitute going to be increased the demand for the other substitute goods is going to be decreases so there is a you can see the cross demand we will discuss this all the things in very deeply let's um, move to uh, move to what that is autonomous uh, direct demand autonomous or uh, direct demand demand for the product that is not uh, not associate with the demand uh, demand of the other product and the demand for com commodity and services meant for the, for the final uh, final consumption that is a direct demand there is a no channel involved now let's discuss the law of demand this is an important the law of demand is also known as a first law of purchase nothing but a first law of purchase there you can see the inverse relationship between the price and the quantity okay between the price there is an inverse relationship and this inverse relationship is also known as satrus paribus okay satrus paribus now now if the price of the commodity falls okay what is law of demand if the price of the commodity is going to be falls demand for the commodity is going to be rise if the price of the commodity increases demand for the commodity is decreases this this terms is known as a law of demand so they having a inverse relationship they having a inverse relationship that's why the slope of the demand curve is a downward slope from the left from the left to right okay and this is called as a negative slope this is what this is a negative slope and here you can see there is a straight line or the sometime this is a free hand curve demand curve and it's also called as it is demand curve is also called as arc nothing but average revenue curve okay and the individual demand refer to the quantity of the commodity and services demanded by the individual customer at a given price at a given period of time and now what is the market demand then individual demand and there is a market demand so what is the market demand market demand is an aggregate of an individual demand of all the cons consumer of the product over a period of time to specific price while other factors are constant other factors like like a pestle or uh, political okay environmental economical so these are the other factors not affect to the demand okay next the reason why i said that the demand curve is having a downward slope and having the uh, from the left to right so why this uh, demand curve is also having the downward slope always having the negative slope there are the some reason what are these reason there is an income effect on the demand how it is affect the income the change in the real income of the uh, real income of the purchaser the purchasing power of the consumer going to be increases 
when the price have price level fall the purchasing power of the consumer going to be decrease increases so what is happening over here price is going to be fall purchasing power is increases that means income uh, income is steady but their purchasing power due to decrease in demand the purchasing power is going to be increases okay and because he spend less in order to buy the same quantity they buy more okay now the next that is the substitute effect substitute effect with the fall in price of the commodity if the tea price is decreases the price of the substitute that means coffee is remain same so what happened what happened the consumer will buy a more there the demand the consumer of the coffee because the tea is the tea's price is going to be decreases so the demand, the consumer of the coffee they are moving toward the tea because they are paying less for this and the tea and coffee completely substitute for the each other so in the result here you can see result there the demand will increases okay now the different user you different use when the price of the commodity rise okay the consumer restricted to use for the most important purpose and other hand if the commodity become cheap different use what if the commodity having the cheap then it can utilize the for all the kinds of purpose and whether important or not now next that is the size of the consumer group in the size of the consumer if if the size of the consumer is how this affect the demand curve here you can see in all the aspect you can see there is an inverse relationship of the quantity and the price okay now the size of the consumer group the price of the commodity falls falls price of the commodity falls then the many new consumer were earlier not able to afford the commodity due to the high prices started purchasing the demand is going to be increases hence the demand for the commodity is increases that's why the size is also affect the demand curve then the law of diminishing marginality we will discuss it in very detail the law of diminishing marginal utility and is also the uh, the reason for that uh, uh, demand curve is going to downward the law of demand demand is based on the law of diminished marginality and this law state that when the quantity of the goods is more okay if you consume more the marginality of commodity is less and thus the consumer is not willing to pay more prices for the commodity and demand goes to be declined that's why this is a law of diminishing marginal utility now let's discuss the price effect how what are the what are the things which affect the price let's see that is a price effect is none but it is a it is a substitute effect plus income effect okay so how it is income effect is a become a less expensive and we have more purchasing power in the income because if the income is increases purchasing power is also going to be increases that means demand is also increases what about the substitute goods if uh, the offer more unit per uh, unit of the money that means uh, if the a substitute price is increases demand for the demand for the another substitute goods is increases so here you can see there is a price there is a price effect is affected by it due to the income and the substitute effect the price effect is some of the substitute effect and the income effect are the price change with a known as a as a such uh, such a sky theorem okay so this is the price and effect uh, is is equals to substitute per uh, plus income uh, substitute effect plus income effect this is also named as slut sky what slut sky's effect okay slut sky's effect okay now let's discuss the impact impact of the there is a substitute effect okay there is an a one uh, the x good okay so what is the effect of the x good the nature of the x good that is if it is a normal goods if it is a inferior goods and if it is a given goods so what is happening if we having a substitute what is the effect on the substitute effect income effect and substitution income effect and the price effect so in case of normal normal what happen increase in quantity quantity increases here 
increases uh the increase in the quantity demanded of the ex good is there what happened in the substitute goods you can see the quantity of the ex goods is going to be increases okay if what happened in the income increase in a uh, increase in the quantity demanded of ex is because the price income uh, income is going to be up so the quantity we uh, the uh, the quantity of the ex good going to uh, uh, has to be increases because they having more capacity to purchase okay and this is a price effect having a positive effect in case of inferior goods increase in the quantity demanded of ex good because the substitute is available in the market that's why the this the price of the other substitute increases the demand for the ex is going to be increases over here now the income effect income is going to be decreased they are not much interested to spend in such kind of uh, such kind of poor goods so that's why here the substitute effect what happened here you can see the substitute effect is greater than the income effect that why it is a positive relation now for the given goods increase in quantity demanded of the uh, of the ex goods also the income effect is also if the it is increase this is also an inferior but highly inferior so having a same relation but here you can see there is a maximum effect on the income okay as compared to substitute so here you can see if the income effect is greater than the substitute effect then it is a relation price relation is negative if the substitute effect is greater than the income effect then relation is a positive clear it now here you will see then the next uh, next here the, the diagram is given so this area this is you know that this is the demand curve okay this is a demand curve so here the unit of the y goods and the unit of the x goods is given so here this area so from this area from the x the price is y1 okay if the price price is y1 the quantity is x1 okay if the price is y1 so quantity is a x1 so and uh, after the price is the uh, price is decreases uh, in a very uh, high rate so y3 y3 is what y3 is decreasing so what happened quantity is going to be increasing so here what is the price is increasing quantity is uh, decreasing so what is happening there is an inverse relationship so here in this case so this area is going to be developed see this area is nothing but a substitute effect why this will happen due to substitute product okay now let's see there is an another line is going to be drawn draw, that is a total utility okay t uh, so here that is a t not total utility this is a t the name given by them so here you can see that is a uh, here the this is here you can see here okay if uh, the y2 okay here you can see the y2 is y2 uh is increasing that means price is increasing okay that means a unit of the y is increasing so here you can see it is a y1 it is a decreasing okay if the y2 is decreasing so here you can see x is going to be x2 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 is increasing okay and if we move toward the y3 so here you can see this is the area is a nothing but a income effect okay now in normal goods increasing quantity demanded increasing income demanded okay so increasing quantity demanded and downward slope of the slope of the curve here in the substitute for the inferior increase in quantity demanded decrease in quantity demanded okay and here you can decrease increase the quantity demanded and the downward sloping the demand curve where then the given goods increase in quantity demanded decrease in quantity demanded decrease in quantity demanded upward slopes to the curve clear now there is a exceptions given exception to the law of demand the exceptions are given goods you have seen that the exception is a, because for the inferior goods if the price is going to be down they are not interested to uh, more buy the quantity so these are the exception you can see that is the exception is the given goods is given by the economics robert giffen 
okay so the word given is derived from the his name that is the robber given given goods are highly inferior lack of substitute occupy occupies a substantial place in the consumer budget and with an increase in price of goods the income remains same the poor people cut the consumption like uh, the best example of the given good that is a gold the price of gold is going to be increasing increasing very steadily so what happened the poor, poor people they are not having the capacity to purchase it they are not having the uh, enough money to purchase the gold so what they do they cut the consumption of the superior uh, substituted and they buy more, buy the more quantity of the given goods to meet the basic needs okay so sorry given goods is nothing but sir, the goods which are uh, inferior they are not uh, too much uh, play a vital role in in our daily routine life so that's why the given goods is a goods they are the consumption of the buy the more quantity of given goods to meet their basic needs okay now the what happen if the gold price sorry gold prices increases what they do the what they do they purchase a artificial artificial so artificial goods goods are having the given goods okay the artificial goods are given goods and the gold is a superior goods so here next uh, next goods that is a webland goods or the snob appeal webland goods are high quality goods high prestigious value okay that means a uh, gold diamond diamond okay so these are the webland goods status symbolics are higher the price of diamond higher the prestigious value attached to the and there hence the higher is the demand for them okay now the price illusion price illusion price illusion means consumer having illusion the higher price of goods are are the better quality okay this is the illusion of the person and this is a um, somehow it is a right also the illusion they having the if the price of the goods is high the quality is high therefore the demand for such goods increases with the increasing price the demonstration effect okay then the bandwagon effect bandwagon effect that means the consumption habit it show the habit of the people people to intimate the consumption trend adopted by the people okay so it is a, ultimately it is a bhed chal okay if one doing the same thing so i will do that uh, that same thing okay if they register for the uh, global online so i will also register for the global online so it is a bad bargain effect then the demand for the last uh, latest phone and the latest car this is a bad bargain effect if they purchase a latest phone i i have also having the demand for the latest purchase is she having latest uh, new phone so i also want the latest so that is a bad bargain effect ignorance sometime the people buy more commodity at a higher price due to the ignorance and this may have they happen because the consumer or consumer is not aware about the price of the commodity so that why there is a ignorance ignorance goods okay why they ignore because they do not have awareness about the goods okay so that is ignorance goods now the exceptions uh, again the exception that is the situations of the crisis if uh, the due to the crisis consumer tend to purchase a large quantity with the with the purpose of stocking and even at a higher price so this is a best example that is at a time of covid we stored more uh, uh, once uh, the once the narendra modi ji announced that uh, there will be a lockdown from the tonight so the, the household goods household or the daily essential goods the uh, the person the people uh, was stored in the stock because uh, they uh, they are uh, and the sellers of the uh, the, uh, the grocery store sellers also selling at the mrp price or they at a higher price okay so this is a situation crisis future price expectation when the consumer expected a rise in the price of the commodity they tend to purchase the commodity at a exact high prices on the contrary consumer expect to fall if they expected the further in the future the price of the goods going to be fall they postpone the purchasing like a gold okay so the today's price of the gold is going to be high so we are expecting the some uh, in this after the few months the gold price will be going to be decreases so then i there uh, and uh, and that time i will purchase that good so this is a future price expectation this is an exception to the law of demand 
then speculative goods the speculative market more will be the demand when the when the price are arises and less will be demanded okay and the price outline the example the stock share then the showing increase in trend so these are the speculative demands okay you are very speculating about the stock speculating about the share they going to be increases trend or going to be decreases okay so this is a speculation goods is also an exception of the law of demand now habitual goods that is due to the habit of the consumption like a tobacco cigarette and we know that they are injurious to the health they are not good for the health liquors they are not, not good for the health still they having a habit so that's why it's not fulfill the the law of demand um, the law of demand so in that case this is also an uh, habit uh, the habitual goods also an exception to the law of demand clear it So thank you so much. We will meet you, uh, meet you soon. So with a uh, more detailed explanation of the uh, economic series. Okay.